Everyone has a lens that they view the world through. The way they view how different pieces of information are related to each other. Everyone has a, a different sense of that. So it's like a lens that they view everything through. All of their experiences, all of the ways that they've gotten information, and it eventually leads to the way that they give information. And so we all have to put on the lens of other people to some degree in order to know what they're really saying. And there are some people who know damn well how to put on the lens of other people, but they refuse to because they want to prove how much better their lens is than your lens. But there is no one lens that's better than another lens. There are differences, and some things work more like clockwork than others. Some things are very rational log and logical and other things are not, and there's a different combination of those things, and there's the way you put together information and all of that stuff. But there's not one that's necessarily better than another. There's some that are more complex than others. There's some that are more simple than others. And sometimes even the, one, the, the people who have the simplest structure in that regard make some of the most rational points. Sometimes they make the, 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 the least rational points, but it's just, there's a new perspective and a new way of looking at things that five-year-olds can give us. I imagine that's probably one of the best things about being a parent is to be able to see the world through someone who is so young. How do they view the world? How are they going to uh, grow up with this? How are they going to to process information? How are they going to look at other people? How, you know, how is this going to turn out? And if you're raising them, you can really see all of those things. But yeah, there are people who refuse to put on anyone else's lens, but everyone's supposed to replace their lens with yours. Not just, you know, try, attempt to view it through your lens. No, they need to destroy their lens and replace it with yours because yours is so much better. I'm so much better. You know, communication is a game of give and take. It's a two-way street. If someone shows that they are at this time unable to put on your to view things through your lens then you need to give them enough information so they can and that includes showing what your biases are i mean i wish news was more open and honest in that regard these are my biases here's the news from me and then we could interpret it how we want people are pushing this idea that we should not discuss our biases. We shouldn't show our biases. There's something wrong with that. I mean, how can you really know where someone is coming from if they're pretending to be uh, neutral about something? I mean, if you have a lot of information about something, you cannot possibly tell me that you don't have an opinion about it. No, I don't have an opinion. Here, let me talk about, about these things for a long time and some of these things. But I have no opinion, even though it's, it's pretty obvious that the things that you talk about here, you, you, you say more harshly, you say, you know, and then on this side, you say things more pleasantly. And it's just like, but you're going to tell me you don't have a bias? It's harder to actually get the real information to the real information, to the meat and potatoes of what someone is saying in a way that, that makes sense because you understand their lens. Um, it's hard to get that information when someone doesn't want to tell you what their biases are. And that's one of the problems with this, this culture of lies that I've talked about before. You know, we... 
We lie about what our intentions are. We lie about our own opinions. People's opinions are based on their lens. How do we expect to understand anyone if we refuse to look at things through a lens of someone whom we disagree with? If we refuse to even look at any of it to try to understand what they're saying? When they know what your biases are, there is there's at least a combination that can be seen. You can understand where someone's coming from. Everyone has a combination. Think of a think of a lock, and you have to forge the key to understand what they're saying. The same goes for when people are talking to you. It's just a required thing. Otherwise, you don't really communicate. You preach. Unfortunately, the SJW side of things, you know, doesn't even want people to ever discuss those things. And we're just supposed to, we're supposed to ruin communication, ruin body language, ruin all this stuff. And yet they don't seem to see how unacceptable their biases are with other people. So this sort of thing happens on all sides. And there are some people who know damn well how to put on the lens of other people. But their, their, their logic is to refuse to do that and then declare that the person word things the way that they want or they just can't be bothered to listen. It's just rubbish. It's just bo bollocks. It's just, okay, then, you know... Talk about the subject. No. No, you need to word it like this. You need to discuss things the way I view them. Well, that's not going to happen. I mean, if it's for the purposes of actually getting an understanding, that's one thing. But when you already understand, but you just want to demand how other people talk about things and frame things, you know, fuck you. There are... <laughs> I mean, I really, really hate it when, when people will... I mean, there are sometimes... There are, there are sometimes Christians that, that makes... And, and other religious people, they will, they will make some sort of point. And because where they're coming from is from their religious perspective, they're not talking about something like a god, but they just... The direction they came at something, unless they word it in a way that does not come from that direction. You know, I guess they're just idiots. They must look at it the same way as you. It doesn't matter if the things that they say doesn't clash with science. And I get, I see a lot of examples of when Christians will try to show, well, yeah, I do know about this. Oh, well, I'm a wordsmith, and now I'm going to judge you because you don't word it just the right way. You know, it's just... <sighs> Yay, so you're a wordsmith. That doesn't mean you have to force everyone else to be either. But that's not the whole problem here. Okay. The problem is that it's doing some of the same things that those who pull bullshit tactics, who are religious, pull. To me, to me, it would be, it would behoove atheists, outspoken anti-feminist atheists, to not use some of those same methods. Because they're bullshit. It's, it's a self-righteous attitude. I mean, totally self-righteous. Oh, but because... Uh, uh, because on, even, on, even the smallest of technicalities you're, because you're right the other person is stupid this word means something else therefore everything you just said is invalid now asking for infor more information and this is the way that I try to approach things I try I'm not always successful but I try for it you know, what do you mean by this? And they, they, they continue to try to explain. Okay. You don't just start judging them. You go, do you mean this? 
and you say, this, this is how I interpret what you're saying. Is this what you mean? Now, I've irritated people, and this is something that I've, I've done for a long time, you know. I like to reiterate. Now, this is my thing. This is my thing. Okay, I'm just saying, you know, you shouldn't let my thing like this irritate you. It's almost like it's triggering for some people. But I like to try to reiterate what the other person is saying. This is when I'm in a live conversation. It's not quite as much this way in text. Um, because it just seems to be a waste in text. Um, uh you know, what do you mean by this? And then it's oftentimes a very, very long time before you get a response, which is fine. It's showing that the person really wants to research, either research what they're saying, or maybe it just becomes too much of a task at that point. Sometimes I've gotten frustrated when people ask me questions that I think should be obvious, but I have to realize that, um, People, a lot of people do not view, uh, do not associate information with each other in even nearly the same way that, that I do, you know. I mean, everyone has their own combination, but mine's a little bit kind of off compared to, compared to most people. Sometimes when I've asked some questions, people are, are, treat me like, you can't be serious. Um... And there have been a few times, again, where I've gotten angry when someone would ask something. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I've actually had people ask questions like, well, what's what's wrong with being mean to someone for absolutely no reason? What? Well, because it could, you know, well, I, well, I try to say because I don't want to hurt them, someone for no reason. And it's like they can't get it. And I'm like, wow. Wow. And it, it eventually leads to discussion, uh, to them giving out labels. Well, if they can't handle it, they're just wussies. Wow. And we want to complain about how... Uh, how, And we wonder, you know, how these, these CEOs can become so greedy... God, who's that guy who raised the the price the, the cost of a, of a really important medication for a very small set of set of people, but um, still a very Im, uh, important medication? You know, uh, increased the price by five thousand percent. You know, I can't remember what the fuck his name was. Just a real, real piece of shit. And you know, people wonder how can people get like that. Well, we can see it all over here on YouTube. This is how people can get that way. And when you don't see anything wrong with uh, with a, a number of bullying tactics, if you don't see anything wrong with that, you think it's perfectly okay. Because well, they just need to they just need to grow a thicker skin. Oh, that's that's so wonderful. Tell me. After a certain point, after a certain point, and I'll agree that, that there's a certain point of it that's, that's, that's beneficial to someone, but after a certain point, what good does having an even thicker skin do to someone? How do you expect pe I mean, if you wonder what creates some of the, the people who who think that this that the, the bullying kind of behavior is okay i went through it and so should you that makes you a man i'm a real man words don't hurt me watch me commit suicide <laughs> male suicide rate up sky high words don't hurt me concepts don't hurt me the only thing that hurts me is is sticks and stones Oh, that's, that's nice. That's nice. The statistics say otherwise. 
Look at the suicide rates. You think this kind of shit doesn't contribute to that? Why does that have to be okay? And if that's the case, and if some of the claims that women receive this more than, uh, than guys do is true, then wouldn't that mean that women are stronger than men if you base it off of the suicide rates? Or maybe this bullshit lie that words, or more appropriately, the, the intent behind nasty words, nasty phrases, and that these unrealistic standards of words don't hurt me, uh, is not a sign of being a strong man. You know, this may show that there are some positive things about femininity, and that is being able to talk about your feelings. Again, we shouldn't base our laws on this sort of thing, but we should be able to talk about them because we can see by the statistics what happens when we don't. But back to the concept of being mean for no reason, to bully for no reason. And let's be clear here, if you're not really trying to change their mind or actually get them to see something, um, then you're just trying to be mean. Why do you want to create that kind of environment? Why would you? Because, I mean, it's, it will eventually make everyone as jaded as you and as mean-spirited as you. Because there's a certain point where you just, you just start to get tired of it. It will make them eventually become mean because that's what happens when you go past a certain point of creating a thick skin. That is the result. And you want to prop that up on a pedestal somehow? And unless you analyze yourself a lot, you're not even going to notice it, and you're eventually not going to see anything wrong with it. And part of this, unfortunately, this attitude that I'm talking about is something I would... If, if, any, if there's any such thing as toxic masculinity, if that exists, then that is the place where it exists. And we wonder, again, we wonder how these CEOs get these attitudes, how some of these business owners get these attitudes. We have the same patterns in the way we do everything. This is on an individual basis, and this is on the basis of what humans do as a whole. And these patterns spread, these mindsets spread. I'm going to Godwin this now. I'm going to Godwin this, this entire video now. People sometimes ask, how could people possibly, possibly do the things that were committed against huge groups of people when it comes to the Holocaust? How could people have been comfortable doing that? Well, I'd say the same thing to the SJWs who bullied, were trying to bully a girl, a young girl, to suicide because she didn't draw a picture. Uh, she, she did cultural appropriation on her drawings, on her fan art. How about the people who incessantly bully people that have bullshit views, they're crap views. They're crap. But people respond by, with death threats, rape threats, anything they possibly can do in text to be haunting, intimidating, to make someone fearful, to make someone feel bad about themselves. And that's the only point Oh, well, I'm really just saying this. No, you're not. You're there to, to, to make someone feel bad. If their views are shit, then just talk about that. You know, think about how there's a number of places on the planet that they would want to hurt some... They, they want to intimidate those who do not believe the same way as they do. Those, and our way of life is almost in complete contradiction 
But when they say those kinds of threats, if they make those kinds of threats, oh, prosecute at every part of the law. An atheist says it, and we're like, well, you know, he just meant this. You need to, you need to have a thicker skin. You need to have a thicker skin. Deal with it. It's reality. Deal with it. It's a reality if, 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 if we somehow created this online environment that represents the playgrounds at elementary schools in the 70s and the 80s when they still had playgrounds that you could get hurt on and the way people would bully each other back then. Who would have thought that that, that would have been brought to now? to adults, or who people who call themselves adults. We do talk a lot about how you know someone's feelings shouldn't be the driving force of laws. We need to base laws off of uh, off of logic and reason. But to not consider the feelings at all of other people, to only care about other people's feelings in the sense of how much you can possibly hurt them. The more pain and hurt you can cause, the better you somehow feel about yourself. If we're not trying to be mean, then we shouldn't care about how we word things. If someone misunderstands, then we reword it. We can't be worried about whether the way that we try to word something nice is. But if the goal is to be mean, and the goal is to hurt someone, how can people not have the sense to know that that's messed up? It's... I don't know the right word. I haven't ma had any sort of major study of, of psych psychology or psychiatry. I study little things here and there, but nothing that I could... Uh, that would qualify me for much of anything, but... It's psychopathic. It's it's sociopathic. It's 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 just having a I guess sociopath probably matches it more, right? And that's probably not right either. But there's this culture of meanness. You know, and I see it even on some some of the channels that I watch, is some of the ones that I say, well, these people are very mean but you can get a lot of information from them. But they are mean. And I don't understand that. I, I, I guess it, it drives people, which is kind of messed up. Why would that drive people? Is this a tradition of our culture? Because unfortunately, for a short period of time, it can feel good to be mean. But then you want more, and then you want more. And people get addicted to it the same way that someone would a drug. It's this, the same, same kind of thing. And this can happen on any side, on any side, and it happens regularly on any side. But it's like it's, it's, always, it's always unacceptable for any other group to, to, to do that in the name of their beliefs. But if you do it in the name of your belief, I'm an atheist, I don't have a belief. Um, you still have the lens that you view things through. Everyone does. Well, it's cool now. Because look, we're rational, logical atheists. I mean, what is it? The religion of the thicker skin, where the meaner you can be, uh, the better? Well, well, who are you to dictate what is mean? I've had people ask me that, you know? How do you, how do you pick that apart? When your purpose is not to educate someone, when your purpose is to make someone feel bad, that's what mean is. That's what being mean is. Or that's one way that you can be mean. There are other ways you can be mean as well. But when you're wanting to cause pain, you're wanting to cause sorrow, you're wanting to make someone upset or feel bad about themselves, it is your goal to do that. Yes, that's mean. That is mean. And if your only reason 
for doing this is, well, he said something irrational. She said something irrational. She said something I disagree with. Well, boo fucking who? That's no reason to sit there and treat someone like shit over it. If they believe differently than you and you think they're wrong, then try to show them where they're wrong. And you don't have to be mean to do that. But most of the time when, the, when, when this is done, when people are mean like this, you don't care whether the other person understands what you're saying. You've actually given up on the idea that they can understand. So now you're just going to be mean as a result. You don't think that's fucked up? And you know what? I'm human. I've done this stuff myself before. And I'm not proud of it. I certainly wouldn't put it up on some sort of pedestal. Oh, I really pwn them. Oh, great. You know? Now, granted, granted, there are some examples where someone, it's just hopeless to try to explain anything, especially from someone who blatantly shows that they don't want to listen to anyone else. Steve Shives? Steve Shives, anyone? Calling Steve Shives? Okay, you know, there are people that do not want to listen to anything else. They want their echo chamber, period. And yeah, that's understandable. But there are some people who haven't even proven that they just want an echo chamber. There are people that will make, that will just talk about a subject real quick. Oh! No! And again, I've, I've done this sort of thing myself. I'm not proud of it. I try to work on it. But it doesn't seem it's very important for a number of other people to work on it. And, you know, be, be who you are. If you're a mean piece of shit, you're going to be viewed as a mean piece of shit. Except by all the people that are in your echo chamber and they'll just think you're just great. They'll think you're the best thing since sliced baked beans. Oh, wait. It, 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 it just, it, it doesn't make any sense. Again, I'm, I'm going back to this, this... It doesn't make any sense to tell someone it's positive for someone to get a thicker skin about thousands of people showing their disgust. Okay, so think, think about this, okay? Think about, like, before the internet. And there would be newspaper articles that would allow people to send in comments and things like that where it talks negatively about someone who is well known in media okay there have been suicides over this shit and this is before the internet this is before that point think about Kurt Cobain for a moment Think about some of the things that he talked about as to what makes him depressed and how people were misinterpreting what his uh, music is about and what he's trying to tell people and they completely misinterpret it and judge his character on it. That's part of this too. And they didn't even see a, a fraction of the amount of things that people see when they get on a platform like this. Oh, well, th those stars were just wussies. What, what might they have went through? Okay. See, there is no problem with giving out facts and countering people's arguments, actually countering people's arguments. But when all you, but when all you do is get mean... Because what they say really, really offends you? What do we say about the other side that does that? You know, I'll say again, most of what is pushed out by, by feminism, by the, this newest uh, intersectional third-wave feminism, most of it is shit. Like 85%, and that's a pretty big fucking percentage, 85% of it is shit. Utter tripe. There are some underlying things that are good, but the rest of it is just tripe. You just have to, you know, you, you, can, you can read, if you want to, you can read that feminist literature and go, wow, they just keep going on and on and on about this one, these, these specific things to try to put it into your head that, well, 
Humans shouldn't be humans. <laughs> no, we need to speak against human nature. We, we, we already know what human nature, but, but, but we, it, for, for guys, we need to, it just needs to be demonized completely. No. You know, so I, I, I get this, this disdain for it. But if you become the very thing that you hate in the other side, you can't claim, you can't claim any sort of superiority over any position. A lot of position is about attitude. We can't have double standards there. A lot of the feminist arguments can be argue, you know, argued against pretty easily. So there's, there's no need to become utter bullies. I mean, just fucking foul, nasty bullies. I'm, I just, I, I don't see a reason for it. Do you know what that gives? That gives all the religious people on YouTube all the ammunition they could ever have against you. Oh, you want to look at some lacking in morals? Just look at this and 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 this. Look, everyone. Look what I can do. But they don't. They don't have to. They don't have to do much of anything. So many atheists have become so nasty to each other. I mean, nasty. And I see people using really messed up tactics to argue with those that are religious. Oh, well, you're using the under the chair fallacy. Shut up. That's the I'm driving my car fallacy. Shut up. It's the my cat uses tweezers fallacy. Shut up. I turned my dad into a pile of Skittles, but all I got was this lousy shirt fallacy. I think you have too many shoes. Shut up. But, but the sky is blue. That's the appeal to common sense fallacy. Citation needed. You need to prove that the sky is blue. Well, you know, it's not technically blue. I mean, it's that's just the way we see it. It's it's just, it, it's a mirage almost. It's it's that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Argument of infinite regress. And if they stop arguing with that infinite regress, well out comes the names. And we complain about it when religious people do it, but it's perfectly okay for us. Because it's all about winning. It's not about trading information, trading viewpoints, trying to see what we can learn from each other. No, 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 no. It's about ponage. My little ponage. But going back to the beginning, there is a lens that we have to at least try to view things through to understand where someone else is coming from. And if we don't even make an attempt at that, what are we doing? Well, we're telling other people how they should have a conversation. You can't just try to understand where they're coming from. You have to prove them wrong. They are wrong. They are wrong. That's the way it normally goes. And it doesn't matter what they do. That's how you're going to address them. That's how you're going to treat them. And if they said, please stop, out come the name calling. Wussy, da 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 da. They could plead. If they were in person, they could be on their knees, and you might just continue. Actually, that whole thing is a fallacy that I just said. Because most people wouldn't do that sort of thing in person. It's using the anonymity of the internet as an excuse to be as nasty to people as possible. And it hasn't done us any good. Do you know where I think our creativity is gone? Other, you know, people have talked about how, uh, you know, social media has changed us. Uh, we're, we're going more into being, uh, you know, let's consume other people's content instead of really make, truly making our own kind of mindset. It might be why, um, 
you know, creativity has has kind of taken a dive. But you know where creativity has went? It's when in, it's in finding new, improved ways of bullying people. Because we never had that chance to bully people to that degree in elementary school. And of course, people are going to want to continue to be able to do that. So they will defend it at every cost. They're scared that if they admit that, that it, that's somehow free speech will be done. That will be completely done with. You know, they're that mean and that paranoid. I mean, this is almost on a level of schizophrenia, kind of paranoid. I can't say I can't say that's bad, or it'll make me a, a wussy, and it might it, it might contribute to free speech going out the window. <laughs> the real thing is, they're saying, well, we can do this because we have no morals. Like I said, keep giving these Christians this ammo. You can be as pissed at me as you want for just stating this outright. And you'll say, well, you're the one that's giving them the ammunition. Not really. You've been doing it for a long time. Not very many Christians will, will interact with, with the atheists anymore because they know exactly how it will go over. And if it's with someone that's popular... <laughs> They will have swarms of, of, of commenters. Swarms of them. And people making hate videos. There will be death threats. There will be people trying to dock drop someone. Show, give them little bits of information showing that you know uh, something about them. And be as intimidating as you can. They know what's going to happen. So why would they bother? Why would any sane person even bother? I don't think some of you realize how foul things have become. You are creating more, more SJW feminists. And feminists are creating more anti-feminists, anti-SJWs. And everyone is having to pick one side or the other. There will be no mediation. There will be no attempts to look at any um, anyone else's lens. It's so incredibly polarizing. Y y you don't get any more polarized than this. This is why people can can support the type of bullying that's that's gone around. And you got jackasses saying there's no such thing as online bullying. Are you fucking kidding me? Like I said earlier, I mean, does a does some well-known person in the 1980s does some did did some well-known person when bad news started going around those stars and those stars look at a paper and see the negative things being said about them? Are they weak for letting it affect them in any way? Are those people weak? Our sense of who is important changed radically over the past 10 years. Radically. And young people are really going to look at a different set of people as to this is what you should be like. This, these are people's idols. These are people's uh, uh, influence. These people are motivational, and it's going to be quite different. I mean, ours isn't any better than theirs. Theirs isn't any better than ours, because our ways have had problems. But we didn't express things like we do now. One does not need to have a religion to be a moral person. Stop trying to prove that wrong.